I did not even mean to start recording that, but you know what? Here we go. Okay. Also, please just disregard the absolute disaster mess behind me. I am 100% one of those people who take out a clean load of laundry and then clearly just let it explode onto my unmade bed and leave it there until it's 100% necessary for me to do something about it. So I haven't always referred to my sobriety toolbox as a sobriety toolbox. During my three plus years in sobriety or recovery or whatever you'd like to call it, I have been experimenting with and exploring different methods and different tools to help me stay sober. But it wasn't until creating this channel that I realized what I was doing was creating a sobriety toolbox. That's why I created this series for the channel, which if you aren't aware, is now called the Sobriety Toolbox series. Weekly video series where I bring a new tip for sobriety or a new tool for sobriety that you can add to your sobriety toolbox if you feel like it resonates with you. So in this video, I'm going to go a bit more in depth about my own sobriety toolbox and my experience with creating one and obviously what's in mine. The research behind having a sobriety toolbox or at least what the research would show as an equivalent. They don't exactly use that terminology. And finally, I'll leave you guys off with a tip that you can use. So make sure to stay tuned until the very end or else. Hello everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel, which is dedicated to getting real, having fun, and living sober. My name is Allie K. Campbell. If you're new here and would like to receive new tools for sobriety every Wednesday, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. If you need notifications for everything in life, like I do, also hit the bell so you get updated every time I upload new content. And with that, let's get right to the show. So I have to first point out that I've always been a bit obsessed with self-development, optimizing my life, even during my drinking and drug days. I was always trying to find the best way to manage my high or get the best drunk or just trying to find a way to do things that would yield the best results. That is up. The point I'm trying to make here though is that creating a sobriety toolbox kind of came naturally to me in a way, even though I didn't really realize this is what I was doing until retrospect. The earliest memory that I can recall that has anything to do with creating something like a sobriety toolbox is from a couple years back when I was in dialectical behavioral therapy, also known as DBT. Quick explanation, DBT is a type of cognitive behavioral therapy and its main goals are to teach people how to live in the moment, cope healthily with stress, regulate emotions, definitely needed help with that one, and improve their relationships with others. Need a lot of help there too. So the main point of DBT is learning skills and being able to implement them in your life. My therapist at the time had me and my other group members create these little like post-it notes or like postcards with um, our most useful skills on them so that in the event that a situation came up where we were struggling and we didn't know how to react healthily, we could refer back to this little magical piece of paper. And that's kind of what a sobriety toolbox is to me. Except obviously in this case, the tools pertain more so to the things that help you stay sober. So throughout the years, I've heard the phrase sobriety toolbox used here and there, but generally it's referred to as something else. Um, I do want to share with you guys what's in mine just to kind of give you a better understanding of what an example of a sobriety toolbox might look like. One, is therapy, which is obviously a big part of my sobriety and my ongoing mental health recovery. And if this isn't your first time watching my videos, then you know, like I'm a big proponent of therapy. Clearly I was in DBT at some point in life. I'm um, no longer because it was really far away, and super expensive, and I'm actually doing a lot better now. So I can pretty much survive with just CBT at this point. But while therapy did not get me sober, it did help me understand my behaviors and my emotions a lot better and it also helped me uncover a lot of trauma. I genuinely feel like my life is much better when I'm regularly seeing a therapist, when I regularly have somebody to sit down with who is like unbiased to my situation and who can you know talk things through with me and can give me like feedback from a professional standpoint, help me navigate my sobriety from a different perspective other than specifically a typical like recovery program would. Number two for me in my sobriety toolbox is journaling. I've always been a writer. Uh, it's always been like a love-hate kind of thing for me. When I have to write for other people, it's more hate <laughs> for the most part. But when it's for me, it's very therapeutic and very cathartic. And journaling every morning has been just really super helpful for understanding the thoughts that are going on through my head and just kind of like being able to process what's happening in my life in a way that has proved to be a lot healthier and more beneficial for me than for instance, getting high. 
Um, number three in my sorority toolbox is a creative outlet of some sort. Like for me, it's this channel. So granted what you guys see is the end result, which is just a relatively polished video, but it takes me hours to come up with the ideas, write an outline so I know what the heck I'm gonna say, the equipment ready, and then do the editing process, putting it out on social media. I have to write content regarding the topic that the video is on. It allows for a lot of different creative outlets for me. And it takes up so much time and like mental space and energy, like in a good way that it allows me to get into a state of flow, which is like very difficult for me to do otherwise. Flow really only takes place for people when they're doing something that is particularly engaging to them. Um, I'm really passionate about it. So having that has helped me to feel like I have purpose. Being able to connect with other sober people through my content has been huge. So this is just like a really big one for me is having that creative outlet. And it gives me something to do with my time that is enjoyable and productive. Um, number four in my sobriety toolbox is exercise. And I hate that I even said that because I'm gonna be real with you guys, I don't like exercising, like it's not fun to me, like even the fun ones are not fun for me. I'm a certified yoga instructor and I still need to drag myself out of bed to do yoga in the morning. I cannot deny the benefits that exercise has on my mental health. It is just as effective as like antidepressants, if not more. And that's not just coming from like my anecdotal experience that's been shown in actual studies. I go for a walk in nature every day. And even in the times that I don't feel like going, I immediately like remind myself of, oh, you feel a lot better when you do this. And doing it is much better than the possible like downsides of me feeling like shit later on. Number five in my sobriety toolbox is a network. And this network is created and sustained by so many different different people, not necessarily just people in sobriety, but also people who are very supportive of my sobriety, like my friends and my family. Um, on top of that, I obviously have the uh, sober internet, which is like sober Instagram, sober YouTube. It is totally a thing. Recovery, TikTok, TM it is totally a thing. And I've connected with so many really great people through these platforms. And I just never would have expected to do something like that. So it's a really beautiful thing that has been instrumental in, in me staying sober. And just knowing that there are other people out there who are there for me and who I can be there for, despite the fact that we might be like living on different continents it's just really amazing so i want to take a look at whether or not there's any empirical evidence or research behind the idea of using the sobriety toolbox like i said earlier that particular phrase was not used in any of the research or the studies that i saw the only thing that that phrase popped up on, on google was actually an old article of holly whittaker's on hip sobriety which is now tempest tempest sobriety school holly whittaker if you don't know is the author of quit like a woman she's a proponent of sobriety and the intersectionality between sobriety big alcohol corporations and feminism it's an awesome book you should definitely check it out and if you're one of those people who are like, uh, oh, Holly, then like just go somewhere. You're, I, I don't want to see your face, okay? I don't want to see your face. So yeah, in her article, I saw that she mentions the sobriety toolbox and she also mentions it in her book. So that was probably the, the only place that I've really seen that phrase used, but even her mention of it, she does refer back to her experience with the doctor and talking about it and how that doctor had rephrased what she called a sobriety toolbox as a coping repertoire. Check out the link to that initial article in the description for this video. You can also buy your own copy of Quit Like a Woman description in this video or any of my videos because it is one of my suggested books on my sobriety reading list. But the one study that I did find about a coping repertoire or sobriety toolbox, if you will, did happen to relate to alcohol use, which I found to be pretty interesting. And it said through the use of this coping re repertoire, it's really hard to say, it was associated with better alcohol treatment outcomes, and it actually may be important in the treatment of alcohol use disorder. And they also found that the broader the coping strategies in the repertoire, the more successful the person's recovery was. Meaning the more tools you have, the better. That actually makes a lot of sense if you think about the sheer number of different things that can crop up in life, problems or adversity, then each unique situation kind of can require a unique tool or solution. So yeah, like the more the better. And even in more traditional methods of sobriety, like 12 step programs, they also promote the use of several tools. Although it might not be necessarily 
communicated in that way. They do it through the use of pithy little sayings, go to meetings, that's a tool. Play the tape through, that's a tool. And if you're curious about what these sayings mean, definitely subscribe to this channel because I'm gonna be creating a series that each video is going to kind of unravel and help us understand some of the more common recovery sayings out there. But in this instance, play the tape through is something that's heard often and whether or not people in AA or NA or whatever it might be actually realize it, it's actually a tool to address euphoric recalls. People who suffer with addiction or um, substance abuse issues often look back at their using and sometimes remember the good stuff and not the bad stuff. People in general do this, like a shitty relationship where you look back and you're like, oh, remember that time that he got me roses, but you forgot that time that he like cheated on you with your cousin or some shit like that. By playing the tape through, it helps you to think back to what realistically will happen if you take a certain action, for instance, picking up a drink and drinking it instead of being like, wow, this is gonna feel so good. Instead, you'd say, hmm, what happened the last time I had a drink? Um, I felt kind of good and I decided to have another one. Then I decided to have another one. Then I had three, then I had four, then I blacked out. Then I woke up the next day and my shoe was missing. It helps you to have a more realistic view of what the past was like. Another saying that's also technically a tool via 12-step programs is just the very classic saying of like one day at a time. That is, for all intents and purposes, a mindfulness tool. It's asking us to be present in the current moment and to not get stuck in the future or stuck in the past. You see where I'm going with this. I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that the biggest benefit of having a sobriety toolbox, rather than say having like one tool, which I don't know anybody who would just have one tool, is that you have a variety of things to choose from and you can choose them depending on the challenge that you're facing in the moment. Of course, the quality of your tools matters as well, which will actually dovetail into the end of this episode where I told you guys I would leave you off with a tip. I was gonna say it's kind of like sneaky, but it's not sneaky at all because I'm not getting anything out of it. But as I said, this year, was created in an effort to create like a sobriety toolbox. So what I've done is I've created a free PDF for you guys to download and it has each of these 26 tools now. I've been doing this for a couple of months and you can like refer back to it whenever you need. It includes everything from episode one to this episode right here. If you wanna download that, you can just go into the description of this video. The link is there, it'll open up in Canva and then you can just like right click and save it or download it if you're on your phone and then just favorite it. And then when the time comes that you're struggling, you just like open that up and check it out. Like hopefully it'll, you know, help you guys out if you're in need. I know that having something accessible like that has been helpful for me in the past and continues to be. Well, that has been the show and I hope you guys got something from it. If you like this content, throw me a like. If you'd like more sobriety content, go ahead and subscribe to this channel. And I'm looking forward to making more videos for you guys. It's been real, it's been fun, and it's been real fun. See you next time.